So what is up guys, this is Jared Spalding here, and most of you have probably seen my uh, one of my recent videos, Mistakes to Avoid When Silver Stacking, and, you know, normally, if one of my videos gets, you know, some dislikes, I usually don't pay attention to them just because of the fact that the people aren't commenting, and it's usually just because, you know, like, especially on the Mistakes video, people disagree with me, but they don't really feel like saying anything, so I just kind of disregard it, but... This time, it wasn't because of that necessarily, it was more because of the quality of the video itself, and I do understand because the camera was shaking a lot, I think, in that one. You know, it was really moving around a lot. And also, I wasn't very, I guess, awake that day, I don't know. I guess I didn't feel very inspired, and I mean, this is kind of sad to say, but I almost felt like, oh, well, this video is not going to get too many views anyway, so what's it really matter, right? So, definitely not a good mindset to have when you're trying to make videos and I am very sorry for that so this is not gonna be like you know just a me putting like a picture over that audio or something like reading you know just that being it I'm gonna be redoing the video because the audio itself was not amazing either and I actually have more mistakes to talk about now and better ones you know and also I'll try to keep it briefer and of course after this you know a little like thing in the beginning I'll try to be more brief about the mistakes I'm talking about because in the other video I did drag on a lot, so I'll only deliver the vital information to you guys. So anyway, let's just jump right into this. Now, normally, for this mistake I'm talking about, I would have some silver for it, but I've actually been selling it off along with some other stuff. But number one, I'm going to be talking about investing in fractional bullion. Something that I have talked did talk about in the last one, but I want to, you know, re-discuss it because I do def definitely think that it's a really big mistake. And... You know, I did fall into the same mistake, and that was because I thought, well, you know, let's say silver spikes, right, to $70, $80 an ounce. Well, it's going to be a lot harder to sell an ounce of silver then, or even 10 ounces or something like that, than, you know, a gram of silver. That would go off really easily. Well, <laughs> that's completely wrong. That philosophy, that, that whole idea is just extremely dumb. And let me explain why. For one, silver... In a situation where the you know the price is spiked, it's mainly going to be due to the demand spike, you know, and therefore, in that situation, silver's going to be a lot easier to sell. And not only that, but the people who are investing, there's going to be a lot more people investing, and they're going to be putting a lot more money into silver, and they're going to want much larger quantities. So the during that time, the focus is going to be shifted over to pure weight, nothing with a premium on it like fractional bullion. So selling, you know, 10 or even 100 ounce bars in that situation would be much easier than in a, you know, situation like right now where there's plenty of, you know, f foolish investors who are bu willing to buy um, fractional bullion. In that situation, everyone's going to be looking for weight and they're going to be looking for major weight. So no one's going to want that kind of stuff anyway. And also, the premiums you pay on it, like I've said before, are completely ridiculous. You know, companies only produce that fractional bullion because they make more money than they would selling one ounce bars due to the fact that there's such a premium on it that even after, you know, the cost of actually making it might be a little bit higher per gram than something like an ounce of silver, at the end of the day, they're still going to be making more money. So, definitely, everyone's making money besides you, you know, the person who's selling it and whatever company is selling it for that um, mint, they're making a lot more money than normal, but you're going to be making a lot less money. And, of course, that's how it works, you know. If they're making more money, you're probably making less money. So, definitely something that, if I were you, I would avoid. Not something I want to get involved with. And the second mistake here is not diversifying your stack. And, again, something I've mentioned before, but let me just explain myself a little bit better. Because last time, I don't think I explained myself very well. I don't think I presented the argument very well for diversifying. So, what I'm going to be talking about here is, so, I've heard a lot lately from many different people directing towards me saying, you know, oh, well, you should just sell off all your newsmatically valuable silver. It's not going to be worth it because, you know, the economy is definitely going to collapse. And once it does, silver is going to be, you know, only bought for weight. No one's going to want something with a high premium. No one's going to be willing to pay a premium anymore, and you're never going to get it back. Okay, so <laughs> this is completely ridiculous, to me at least. And my reason being, if so you're basically telling me that because of something that could theoretically happen and is most likely not going to be happening in the near future, I should completely plan accordingly to that. Does that really make any sense to you? Think about it, because let's say you've been doing that, right? You've been hearing these same people that were trying to tell me this type of 
stuff and you know let's say you've been doing the same right around April of 2014 two years ago now and silver was looking nice it was you know floating around 23 an ounce it was getting back up there and you're thinking oh yeah silver it has the potential to go back up to 50 an ounce I'm gonna put everything into bullion and <laughs> you know you saw it wasn't even a quick death or anything it was slow and painful because very slowly silver lost more and more value and you were thinking you know in around august or so uh well silver is down a, l a little bit but i'm pretty sure that it will go back up you know it's only down 50 cents i'm not gonna sell it'd be a loss and then in september oh man silver had already lost several dollars in value and you're like well i don't want to sell yet you know it'll probably be a back up within a year at most and that's a that's giving it a lot of time and it's been two years since you had been investing and You've never managed to see the price that you paid for silver. So everything you bought, if you sold right now, you'd be at a loss. You may be saying, well, you're always talking about investing for the long run. You should know I'm not going to sell. Anyway, right? Okay. But what if you're forced to sell? What if something comes up and you need $1,500? You know, and you're, so you have to sell 80, 85 ounces of silver. And you're never going to see that money again. But also, you would have only had to have sold maybe 60, 65 ounces of silver in the other time, you know, before. Or if you had the same amount of equal currency, basically, you know, you would have only been paying the equivalent of 60 ounces of silver then, or 80 ounces now. So, 20, basically, um, we're paying in one-fourth more silver, or like one-fourth of the total amount of silver you're paying, you shouldn't have to be paying, because that's money that you're losing. And of course, you're going to be losing it all if it's something that comes up, like, you know, someone who needs, like, money or something, like, something, you know, something comes up, I don't know what your circumstances might be, but if something were to come up, and, you know, you were to need currency really quickly, you basically would have lost a lot, because, let's, and we'll be generous here, because I know silver was down as low as 13.90 an ounce, but we'll say, we'll go from 22.50 to 16.50, or 16 an ounce, right, because silver's been around 16 an ounce right now, and let's say you'd bought 22.50, that was your cost average, you're still going to be talking about $6.50 less than what you had bought the silver for originally. And, you know, after premiums and everything, you know, premiums have gone down on bullion a little bit because bullion is not as enticing right now. And <clears throat> therefore, you even might have lost your premium a little bit on the generic bullion too. And so where's your, you know, where's your weight then, right? Investing for weight. I don't see how that's going to help you if, in that situation, you would have lost a lot of money. You may be thinking, well, I'm financially secure enough where I don't have to, I don't, even if something came up, I wouldn't have to sell any silver. Well, guess what? That's great for you. But for the, you know, 95% of us who don't have $1,500 to just readily, you know, give out, that could be a problem. And therefore, you know, that is something that you definitely want to consider and something that I would consider at least. And uh, as opposed to Newsmatics, which you can might say, if, well, if silver falls, then silver and Newsmatics are certainly going to fall too, right? Not necessarily. It really depends on the coin, though, because certain coins have managed to grow during that time and certain have lost during that time. But you just have to know what kind of coins to invest in. And as long as you were, you could have still, even if you're forced to sell, actually be selling the coins for more than you paid for them. But at the very least, you might be taking a 5% loss, you know, something like that, as opposed to a 20 28 well no 29 30 percent loss that you'd be taking going from 20 to 50 to you know 16 dollars an ounce just about 29 percent i believe and that would you know hurt you a lot more and not only that but also newsmatics unlike silver can actually be bought for a good deal you know you silver you're never going to find it like below spot unless something really shady is going on but with newsmatics sometimes people don't realize the value of the piece that they're looking at and during an auction, you might pick it up for a good deal. You might not, but then you keep on searching, right? So, you would still, and then you could have the potential to gain a lot of money by selling that in Newsmatic. So, it's just something to consider there. But a third mistake I want to talk about is one that I have not mentioned before ever, and but definitely a huge one that I've seen, and that is believing everything you hear, you know? And, you know, I'm just going to clear this up right here. You might be thinking, well then how can I even believe you? You're one of, one of those people telling me about solar investing advice. Well, a few things to consider about that is, for one, the stuff I talk about is kind of basic knowledge usually, you know, like, 
something like, you know, talking about profiting off a bubble. Bubbles have happened before, and they're going to happen again. That's something that I can guarantee you, you know, that's something that's surefire. But some of those so-called silver experts out there who like to, you know, rile up a big, cause a big stir, rile up a crowd by talking about, oh yeah, economic collapse is definitely going to happen. You want to be ready for it. You definitely want to be prepared. Maybe you won't want to believe that so much. And not only that, but every little detail they say, everything they say, they say they expect you to take as you know solid gold, because they think you know I'm an expert, right? So everything I say must be true. Well, and I mean I don't want to sound you know like I'm against anyone or anything, but someone like Mike Milani, who's always talking about economic collapse and that type of thing, whether he believes it or not. I don't know. Maybe he does. Maybe he even believes himself there. And I do think it's possible. But for one, I can admit that I don't know, you know, I don't know everything that's going to happen. I can't predict the future. And as much of an expert as he is, you know, I'm pretty sure that doesn't give you the power to time travel. So he's chances are, like I was saying, the economy is not going to collapse tomorrow. And it's probably not even going to collapse in the next couple of years. And while it's a good thing to prepare for, you can't just expect that that's what's going to happen. That's the only opportunity, you know? And honestly, I think that people like him only say that type of thing, not because they necessarily, you know, believe it or not, but just because they want to sell books. You know, his book I've read, um, Guide to Investing on Gold and Silver, and honestly, it was a New York Times bestseller, but why do you think that was? Do you think if he had been like, oh yeah, the economy might collapse, I'm not too sure, do you really think that it would have become that, you know, reach that spot? Chances are no. Instead, what would have happened was he wouldn't have made nearly as much money, he wouldn't have been happy, and that's where a large, you know, a large large amount of his money does come from. It's not just precious metals, but also from, you know, the other things that he's ventured out to, like being an author. So, of course, if he can rile up a bunch of people, he's going to do it. <laughs> I mean, that's obvious. And the other thing is that if he revealed all the secrets to you, do you really think that, you know, and everyone started doing what he was doing, where, where would the money be left, you know? There would be no money left in the market anymore. So obviously, he's not telling you everything he knows. And he's not even telling you everything he believes. So that's just something to consider there, you know. And also, don't be too extreme with anything. Definitely keep an open mind whenever investing silver. Be willing to hear other people's viewpoints. Because their chances are, with something you view, there are plenty of people who have a better viewpoint on it. Or maybe just a different one to consider. Now... The fourth thing I want to talk about here, and this is one that still I don't even understand how it's possible, but people who buy fake silver. Oh, man. So, this I'll only have to go over for a few minutes, I think, because it's so simple to avoid. You want to know the best way to avoid it? Don't buy it from unreputable sources. There you go. You know, I could literally just move on right now, and I'll elaborate a little bit, but basically, you can't be just buying from any you know shady website or... And he's selling on eBay because you think, oh, well, this is the deal of a lifetime. You know, I'll never get this deal again. And you, why do you think it's the deal of a lifetime? Why do you think there's not more deals like that? Because it's fake, you know. Either A, you're going to get fake bullion, or B, you're going to get nothing. And all the money that you paid is going to be sent into a foreign account. So they might have someone who claims to be based in the U.S., but they could even be operating from a foreign country. And, you know like the actual account where the money's going to is operating in a foreign country and just have someone based in the U.S., you know, selling for them and not really selling anything. And then that person, right when, you know, they make a lot of money, could just leave the country, right? Or it could they could be, you know, so such experts in computer technology that they know how to get around the system and know how not to get caught. And there's plenty of people out there who, if you they're going to be selling a lot of silver, are going to... But, yeah, if they, if they have that enough knowledge on the technology, then they're going to easily bypass the system, get through, you know, anything that they need to. If it's going to be enough money that they're going to be making, or enough currency, I mean, then they'll do it. And at that point, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, eBay's terms terms and service is not going to help you anymore because all the money is in another country. They're going to be like, well, not my problem. There's nothing we can do about it anymore. It's not in the U.S. How are we going to retract the payment, you know, if the currency is not digital anymore? And exactly, there's nothing they, they can do for you anymore. And I wouldn't expect them to either because it's your fault. You know, there, there's a point where being a victim turns into being a victim of yourself and no one else. You might be thinking, well, it's really unfair that I have to watch out for all this stuff. And sure, it is. But at the end of the day, 
it's so easy to avoid that, you know, if you do fall for it, then maybe silver investing is too complicated in and of itself for you. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and of course there's more mistakes to talk about, but these are just the big ones, these are also the common ones I see. You know, actually, you know what, there's something, there's something else I really wanted to um, go to real fast, and that is, I'm not overpaying for bullion or going into any kind of market you don't know. Just make sure, you know, you always know the price of silver and also know the value of the newsmatics that you're investing in. And like I said, if unless it's from a reputable source or anything, don't invest in anything that you don't know enough about already to be able to tell if it's real or not in person. And don't buy any from anyone, you know, that seems shady online. Just trust me, you want to avoid it. It's going to help you. <laughs> and as long as you know... Um, the price of silver and that you're getting a fair deal on bullion, you know, it really, really takes a minute to find out the value of silver, the spot price at any given moment. So it's just something to do and make sure that you are knowledgeable about what you're doing and that type of thing. That's just something really easy to say. But I do hope you guys enjoyed the revised edition, remastered version, if you will. And that is it for this one. Peace, love, and much respect.